Hello everyone, it's Caribbean E. Welcome to the channel. Hope everybody's just having a wonderful day and everything is going great and that you are in the best of health. Today I'm coming with another inspirational message. And my topic is today, physical, physical abuse. Physical abuse. Um, during this COVID season, there's a lot of people that are living in their homes that are being physical abused because of the pressures of trying to make deadlines, uh, problems of trying to keep food on the table, keep the car payment going, keep the rent, or the house mortgage paid, amongst all the other bills that continue to come in every month, COVID or not. It can create a stressful environment and at home where things are uneasy in this season. So physical abuse is a tough pill to swallow. So I chose today to talk about that briefly. Um, and I'm reminded of a gentleman by the name of Joseph. His story is told in Genesis, the 37th chapter and the fifth verse. Joseph was a dreamer. He was a gifted young man. And he dreamed a dream and he told it. And his brothers hated him because of it. So the more gifted he was, the more he was hated, and the more he interpreted dreams. Even his own father didn't understand him at first, but then once he did, he kind of favored Joseph. But Joseph had other brothers too. But Joseph was the special son, picked out to be picked on. Joseph was rather cocky, and we'll see that in my little story in a few minutes. So, Genesis 4, and when Joseph and his brothers saw that their father loved him more than his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably with him, unto him. Also, he's mentioned in a few other scriptures of the Bible. There's, he's not the only one that was abused in the in scripture, in the Holy Scriptures. The Hebrew boys was abused because they trusted God. And these three men was cast into a fiery furnace. But God showed up to take the heat out of the flames. So they put in three, but therefore there was four in this fiery furnace. David was picked on and bullied by Goliath. But he just needed a slingshot and a smooth stone to take care of that problem. Also, Daniel in the lion's den was picked on because he would not bow down to the king's degree. So, it is something to experience physical abuse. But if God be for you, who can be against you? It is that simple. So Joseph's accomplishments and strengths was, he rose in power from slave to a ruler of Egypt. He was known for his personal integrity he was a man of spiritual sensitivity. He prepared a nation to survive a famine. That's powerful. But his weaknesses was, and we all have weaknesses. His youthful pride caused friction with his brothers. Because he had pride. So lessons learned from the life of Joseph as it relates to abuse. What matters is not much 
the events of circumstances of life, but your response to them. How are you going to respond to years of abuse? How are you going to articulate how are you going to recover and what future shall you have shall you have as it relates to physical abuse? With God's help, any situation can be used for good, even when others attend it for your harm. They attended it for Joseph's harm, but God intended it for his good. I'm quite sure it wasn't a pleasant feeling being abused, because no one enjoys being abused, physically, mentally, whether you're on your job, whether you're in your home, whether you're in a church, whether you're in any type of environment in the neighborhood, nobody enjoys being physically abused. There's many kids have came to school with abuse, abuse marks on their bodies. And some of the school counselors and some of the school nurses overlooked it. And shortly after that, they found the kid was beat to death. So these are some things that are very important that we be made well aware of, of physical abuse. And I must say, the bright side of this video is you can recover from being physically abused. Don't forget, one point I want you to get, one objective. Your abuse don't define you. It don't determine your outlook. Abuse Joseph, but now set free. He was down, but not out. This is a very, very inspiring story about Joseph and many of you can relate to what I'm talking about. And if you find yourself in a situation like this, remember, there's always help. So I would like to give, at this time, I would like to give my own personal uh, testimonial of what I've been through and being physically abused when I was a little boy, around the age of seven to eight years old. I was raised in a family, it was five of us. Uh, it was three boys and two girls. And we were raised in the projects in the city of Newark, New Jersey. I still remember the address like it was yesterday. 131 Rose Street. I'm not even sure that street is still there. I'm not even sure those projects are still there. But that's where I was raised up. Um, I lived with my mother, my brothers and sisters. One day, my mother and my father got into a fight. Um, he started abusing her. He beat her up in front of us. We was, we was told to go to the room, but we still heard what was going on. My father had company. They had been drinking. Um, he beat my mother up, pushed her down, punched her a few times. Went in her closet, cut up all the clothes that he bought her. He packed the bag shortly after that and disappeared from my life. And i never seen him since. A grown man, he disappeared. i never seen him. So shortly after that, my mother lost it. She became a compulsive alcoholic. She was always in the bars. We were home, we didn't have anything to eat. We had jelly sandwich on top of jelly sandwich on top of jelly sandwich, peanut butter. And from the morning till lunch till dinner. Uh, we was practically starving in the house until she decided to come home and fix something for us. Um, we had the canned milk, the canned milk we had for breakfast was carnation milk. We added water to it, we poured it in our Cheerios or whatever conflicts we had. But like I said, it was five of us, all of us had a pretty good appetite. And lots of times I went into the refrigerator and there was nothing there to eat. We searched, searched, looking at the cupboard, there was nothing there. So we'd go hungry. And we'd just try to find uh, anything that we could find uh, to eat in the cupboard. Um, there were roaches in the house. Not small roaches, but big roaches. We would kill them all the time. And we were just trying to fend for ourselves. Okay, at, shortly after that, the state came by, they kept knocking on the door. Come to find out we were alone, we were by ourselves. Even though my mother told us, don't open the door for nobody. The guy said he was from the state. We opened the door for him. He came in, talked to us for a few minutes. i never forget his name. His name was Stephen Dale. He was from the Division of Welfare. 
um, department for the work for the state. He would come in and check on us. He would see how we were looking. He would see how we were dressed. He would go look at the cabinets, look at the refrigerator. And after a few visits, he had to come and get us and take us out of there. And sometimes my mother didn't come home at all. We had Christmas, Christmases where we put the Christmas tree up. There wasn't nothing under the Christmas tree. It was just one of those bad situations from a childhood. So we were physically abused. Plus, when we left, the state declared my mother unfit. So my older sister had to take all of us in. And she had a kid or two of her own. So we ended up in a three bedroom house. Uh, one bedroom downstairs, two bedrooms upstairs, one restroom for everybody in the house, which, 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 which was tough. Um, at that time, my sister was under pressure she was under the gun, but I appreciate her for taking us in. But in the midst of that, we were physically abused. We were beat, would be bad, get in trouble. We were stripped buck naked, tied up hands and feet, beat with an ironing cord with somebody's feet on our back holding us down. Welts, and sometimes we get the blood beat out of us. All depends how bad the things that we did. Um, Sometimes we'd put in the bathtub and get ourselves nice and wet and get whipped. Now there's one thing to discipline a child, but there's another thing to be physically abused. Um, I'm not the only one, okay, that had this story. I'm glad that after all the abuse, I was slapped, I was punched, I was kicked, I was knocked down, all this and my upbringing. And at the end of all that, what really ended all that for me is when I ran away from home and I kept running away until the state decided to put me into the YMCA until I graduated from high school. When I graduated from high school and got that diploma, I got my uh, GED. I went down, I signed up for the United States Army and that's where my life began. So I would like to say that all stories don't have to end up bad. My story is a success story because I made good on my bad. Uh, I love the scripture in the Bible that says your latter shall be greater than your former because from all of that, um, I was able to raise a family, and matter of fact, two families, not abuse them, but always love them and respect them and give them everything that I didn't have when I was a child. And most of all about that, I did not treat them how I was treated when I was a child. So, just because you've been abused and you come up from an abusive from a relationship, childhood, or whatever it may be, don't give you the right to carry on a life of abuse, abusing your own kids. So this abuse thing, physical abuse, is a very, very dangerous uh, matter to consider. Very, very dangerous because it can either make you or break you. We start out with the story talking about Joseph, okay? And I defined the word, I looked the word up, abuse. And abuse in its meaning is improper treatment of a human or animal. Are you listening to me? It's improper treatment of a human or animal. Violent treatment, misuse, destructive, hateful. That's what abuse is. And a lot of people are experiencing this even today as I speak and record this video. I look at the life of Joseph because he was a man that was completely and totally abused by his brothers. But not only him, but also Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords was completely and totally abused. Beat and whipped. They slashed him, they beat him. He was, he was, he was bruised for our nigga chest time of our peace was upon him. But with his stripes we are healed. He was wounded for our transgression. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon us. But with his stripes we are healed. They beat him on his back, they beat him 
for hours. Then they turned him on his stomach. And they beat him almost with a cat and nine, almost like a barbed wire, cutting his, cutting his flesh, cutting his skin. And for the average person that got that many lashes on his back, his stomach, his face, would need emergency attention. He would probably have so many stitches, he wouldn't know what to do. But he was abused. So this Joseph, this Joseph fella, this young boy, was put in a pit, the left for day. But the same traders came along and found him and picked him up. And he ended up in Egypt. Then he rose to be the prime minister of Egypt. So he went from rags to riches. And sometimes in your abuse, as bad as it may seem or feel, that's the preparation for something greater to happen to you in your life. I would caution you, if you abuse, you must remove yourself from the abusive and from the abusers as soon as possible. As we look at history, the slave, slaves were beat and abused by their slave masters. They were hung from trees, they were slashed, they were whipped, they were kicked. Abuse runs in our culture. Even today, there's people being abused on their jobs. Every time you clock in, the abuse starts from the time you clock in to the time you leave. I know I lived it, I experienced it for almost 29 years of abuse. Some people don't even realize they're abusing you until you bring it to their attention. So, in this story, Joseph, the dreamer, the gifted one, was abused. But he went from rags to riches. And I want you to know that you can go the same route if you put your trust in God. And again, the story will have to end with somebody dying or losing their lives. You make the decision how much abuse you're going to take because I believe that enough is enough. If I can abuse and remove myself from abusive relationship or situation, then you can do the same thing. I hope I said something to you that could help you as you look around you and look at life and see how many people are still yet in abused relationships and are still covering it up. It's not called for, it's not, it doesn't make sense. You don't deserve to be treated like that. And you that are mistreating your animals and your pets, you shouldn't do that. Because there's one thing I really believe that karma will come back around. Do unto others as you have others to do unto you. We're going to have abusers, and they're going to continue to abuse people, whether it's different cultures, different languages, different countries. You're always going to have those people. But you got to be aware of it, do something about it, and make sure that you have a way out of a situation that has turned terrible. So, in the meantime, between the time, most remember life to be enjoyed. Hit that subscription notification. And remember, you can go from rags to riches. If you believe and trust in God and stay focused even in a bad situation. Peace.